Longer format videos I struggle sometimes because I'm so used to recording videos and having them be jump cuts and me getting angry and cutting that out and you guys never being able to see it but where I'm doing this and it's pretty much raw except for the cuts between when I have to stop recording and when I start recording it's just a very strange take and I get frustrated and I get mad but I figured I need to show you guys the real self the real version of me because it makes it a bit more personal today I wanted to talk about emotional intelligence and something that I've been working on and something that I feel very I, f I feel like I need to speak on it because I don't see many people talking about it to begin with is how can we have emotional intelligence? What is emotional intelligence and why do you need emotional intelligence in your life? This is the thing that's going to stop you from doing the things that you don't want to do. This is kind of the saving grace for a lot of people and most people aren't aware of this certain thing. Most people aren't even aware of what emotional intelligence is and I'm here to lay that foundation to you. If you want to become a better version of yourself like we all do and I got to pitch this if you want to join a community of all of us who are actually trying to become better with emotional intelligence intelligence and actually becoming better with it, join the self-improvement lab community down below. It costs you nothing. It's free. It costs you zero dollars. Would you believe that? It costs you zero dollars to join the self-improvement lab community down below. Hit the subscribe button. Join us. We're all becoming better. Join a nice community. We're all friends. So don't be shy. Don't be a stranger. Come around. Join the self-improvement lab community. As I'm done my pitch, because we have to pitch, this is a masterclass on emotional intelligence. How can we get over emotional intelligence and where did we come from? I wanted to start with a little backstory. See, what I have here is I was always ang I, what I have here is anger. Okay. I was always an angry kid. I was always a very reactive kid. I always felt like I was lacking in some sort of sense. You know, I every I felt like everything was personal, and we will get into all these subtopics, but reacting to those impulses that I had was very difficult at times because I felt like I was never in control. And as a human, when you cannot control yourself, it's very hard to get over. What I have written down here is cannot control themselves. This stands out to emotional intelligence. This is almost kind of like the subtopic of emotional intelligence. Can you control yourself? Ask that question to your, ask, well, ask that question to yourself. I feel like I'm saying yourself a lot, but seriously, can you control yourself when times get tough? Sure, you can control yourself when things are going easy, but when you're being reacted to, or when someone's pressing you with a question, or someone's pressing you with a certain certain topic that's really bothering you, or whatever it is, a certain scenario where maybe you're getting chased or where you're getting beat up can you control yourself can you stop yourself from doing the things that you don't want to do for instance scream at the person yell at the person say a bad word fight the person get into trouble whatever it is the list can go on and on and on can you control yourself do you have intelligence to say that no i don't need to react on the impulses i need to chill out i need to take a breath and i need to stop that's what emotion emotional intelligence is this is what i like to call the saving grace Emotional intelligence is the saving grace to people who don't have a saving grace. Okay. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by saving grace? Well, it's the thing that's going to help you get out of situations you don't want to be in. You don't want to be in just for sake of time. I don't want to write the full thing out, but the saving grace, it gets you out of situations you don't want to be in. For instance, you get into an argument with your manager and you guys are going back and forth and you guys are arguing about when you need to do this or maybe a certain task at work. Emotional intelligence is going to be your saving grace because it's going to stop you from getting mad at the situation. It's going to stop you from reacting on impulse. See, what happens is when we get heated, when we get mad, when we get angry, we always want, we when anger is a very hard and strong emotional feeling you know anger is very hard not to react to when something angers us when we have something go wrong we really want to act on that impulse for all you gamers out there when you had a situation happen in the game that made you angry what was the impulse it was always to break the controller and even if you held back for a quick sec even if you stopped yourself from smashing the controller it was very hard to not do something else. Maybe you stopped yourself from smashing the controller. And I was one like this. I was one to always smash the controller. But even if I stopped and I sat there and squeezed the controller, I still wanted to do something. Hit the keyboard, throw a pen, throw a pillow. I, there was always something I wanted to do. It's very destructive, but the draw on emotion through anger is very strong. And that saving grace through emotional intelligence says that you don't need to react to this anymore. But how do we not react, Zach? That's the biggest question I get asked. How do I not react to the situation at hand? One thing I'm gonna plug here real quick, and I'm not sponsored, get on the ashwagandha. That's just a joke, but I'm seriously saying that it will help. Realize that it's not, it's not about you. It's not a personal attack. Let's put a personal, personal 
A-T-T-A-C-K. It is not a personal attack. It's not about you. You need to understand that when you're getting drawn into these anger situations, when you're getting drawn into these emotional situations, realize that it's not about you and it's not a personal attack. Because what happened for me is when I was always getting pressed with certain situations, what I wish I had have known is that the situation at hand is not a personal attack on you. It may feel like a personal attack on you, but one thing you need to understand too, and I'm sorry that I get sidetracked, but this is very important. Be very careful because you're letting another person, another person dictate how you feel, okay? You are letting another person dictate how you feel by making you angry and you're not realizing that it's not a personal attack on you. It's just how the person's reacting. Seriously, honestly, if I had gone back and understood that when every, anytime someone pressed me with a certain question, anytime somebody pressed me with a certain situation, whether it was hockey or whether it was football or whether it was school and I was always getting angry, I had to realize that I was letting another person dictate how I felt, so I was letting them have all the power. You need to understand that when you react on those emotional feelings, whether you want to cheat on somebody because they did you wrong or whether you're angry because someone made you mad or whether this, that or the other thing, whatever strong emotion you're feeling, it's not a person personal attack on you. You need to understand that. Stop taking it so serious. It's not going to change your life. You need to understand that. It's not a personal attack. It's not about you. You're letting another person dictate how you feel. And that's the one thing people forget is that letting another person dictate how you feel means that they have the higher ground. You're letting the person become above you. Now you're giving that person all the power. You're giving that person all the power in the world to do with you whatever you want. You may not even feel like you are letting the person win the conversation, but because they're, you're getting so reactive to the things that they're saying, understand that now that person is on a higher ground and you're down here. Even though you may feel like you're up here in your own little delusional world, that person who has higher emotional intelligence, the person that's making you react, is now this much farther above you on the scale of emotional intelligence. Let me pause for a quick. Juice break. How's your guys' day going? Is your guys' day going well? I'm, I'm a ho I hope it's going well because this is very important to your mo uh, mental health in your day-to-day -day life because if you can't have emotional intelligence, if you can't have an idea of... I'm not, I'm not going to take life so seriously. You're not going to have good days because I do find a lot of bad days are tied into situations at work that leave you feeling bad because you got into an argument or you're living me or you're living in a fake world in your head and you're not having a grip on emotional intelligence. See, one thing we forget about emotional intelligence, and this is actually quite important, and what I wanted to share with you guys is you're living in this fixated world. You know, it's very interesting that some people can't shut off their minds, but half of the time what happens is when you're in your mind, you're living in this negative world, you're feeding this negative loop, and sometimes you're in this negative mind or this negative mindset where you're thinking about a situation which hasn't even happened or isn't gonna happen, but it's making you angry. Have you ever noticed that when you're driving down the road and you're thinking about an argument you had with your boss and you're gripping the steering wheel ever so tightly or you're thinking about a situation at work or maybe you messed up or this that or the other thing and something happened and you're reacting on that emotion that's what emotional intelligence is is to come back from your thoughts is to come back from the idea of your thoughts and say why am i thinking like this why am i reacting to this <coughs> excuse me <coughs> why am i so pent up with anger and so pent up with remorse and sadness of whatever whatever I'm feeling, why do I feel like this and why am I giving into this temptation? Why am I giving into this temptation of uh, feeling? Because what happens is, is you, you swing like a pendulum and the pendulum swings back and back and back and back. Understand that you get you ride the highs and you ride the lows. And that's the thing of life is you ride the extreme highs and you make decisions off the highs and you ride the extreme lows and you make decisions off the lows. And emotional intelligence keeps you in that middle plane. It keeps you in that idea of, yeah, the highs are there and I can swing with the highs, but I can also swing with the lows because if you ride that pendulum back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, well, is there any wonder why you're gripping the steering wheel on the way to work? Is there any wonder why you're telling all the good news when you have good news and you're so excited and the next day you're completely sad because you got into an argument with your fiance or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever it may be? But that EI 
keeps you in check. It understands and it tells you that, yeah, it's okay. It's a good day. I'm reacting on the good day as if it was just a regular day. This is what it is. And some people think that's, you know, psychopathic or narcissistic to kind of be in the middle of this high and low. But truly and honestly, it talks about it in the actually in the hermetic laws that you need to kind of ride the balance of the both. Stop reacting to the highs and stop reacting to the lows. Gather some emotional intelligence and understand that you can ride with both. But don't be so reactive to the lows and the highs because when you're reactive to the lows and the highs, it's almost like you're trying to catch the next high. It's almost like you're trying to catch the next feeling. You know, what I like to say on the opposite plane of emotional intelligence is, is an emotional latching, is an emotional addiction, is an emotional looking for that next hit of dopamine, looking for that next hit of sadness. It's almost like you train your brain into believing that something negative is going to happen and you're looking for that negative feeling. You're looking for that happy feeling. And emotional intelligence is going to keep you in the plane to say, no, you need to stop looking for that emotional sickness. You need to stop looking for that emotional high because when you look for that emotional high, you're going to ride through life and good things are going to happen, but you're always going to be thinking about the negative because your brain wants to go towards the negative. Your brain wants to feel the negative. Your brain really likes the negative and you like the negative. You like what comes with it. You might not want to admit that you like to sit down and feel negative thoughts, but the reason that you feel the way that you do is because you keep feeding the negative thoughts or you keep feeding the happy thoughts. We want you to flip your mindset and say emotional intelligence, stay in in the middle. Stop riding the lows and stop riding the highs because when you ride the lows and you ride the highs, you make decisions off the lows and you make decisions off the highs. And most of the time when you make decisions off the highs, what happens is, is you're telling people, oh, this happened to me. This happened to me. This happened to me. I did so good with this, that, or the other thing. And you're setting yourself up for failure because when you ride the highs and you make promises on the highs, promises on the highs, you set yourself up for failure. Because if I was to win the lottery and I promised somebody $200,000 by the end of the year and they were so excited and I felt so good, I felt so enthused to do that certain thing. Well, when that time comes and I don't have $200,000, guess who you just made mad? Guess who you just made angry and you just screwed yourself because you wanted to make a silly decision when you were high? Understand that. And then when you make the decisions on your low, you say that, oh, I'm going to kill myself. I'm sorry. I'm going to but you don't understand that life can get better. I, I, and I know this is the extreme, and I hate to say it, but it's something that needs to be said. That emotional intelligence stops you from making those certain decisions. Now, obviously, this I am going to KMS is really, really, really in that deep end, and it's feeding off that deep end, but I truly do believe that you can choose to feel any emotion you want. Well, that's a take that not many people agree with. I highly, I highly doubt the people that have viewed this video to now don't live with that same thought, because I guarantee you, you do live with that same thought. You understand that, that at some point, you need to be able to choose the emotions you feel. Emotional intelligence is saying that I need to choose the emotion to feel. I might not feel happy right now, but I know that I can force myself to feel happy. You know, there's always a reason to be happy. There's always a reason to be sad, whatever it is. Emotional intelligence says that you can choose whichever one you want to feel at a certain time. When well, there's a time to grieve and there's a time to be happy, emotional intelligence says that you can do both. It just depends on what you want to feel at that certain time. Because being reactive isn't going to help you in any situation. Being reactive isn't going to make you a better person. Being reactive isn't going to have good things happen because when you're reactive, you're waiting on a certain circumstance to make you feel a certain way. Okay, let's erase some of this and move on to something else I wanted to talk about. Let's make some room. It's so funny when I look back on myself as a kid and I look back and think, man, oh man, I was so reactive to my emotions. I wish I had a, had a bit more emotional intelligence because it was true, man. I was getting angry because people were calling me fat and I was getting really upset and really like stupid angry. And I always thought the world was against me. I don't know what it is with people who are emotional. They always think that the world's against them and that God's out there to plot against them. When it says in Jeremiah 20, 11, 29, 11, for I know I have the plans to prosper you, says the Lord, plans. for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. It's interesting. We think the world is against us. The world is against us. Interesting. That people who don't have emotional control think that everything that's happening to them is because the world hates them, because the world doesn't want them to succeed. And that's as far from the case as it could be. It's your brain is so latching onto those. This is going to be the negative. Your brain right here wants to feed off of those negative thoughts. It feels good when it gets to those negative thoughts. 
And that's the reason you think the world's against you. The world isn't against you. God wants you to have the best life possible. But what happens is, is your brain is telling you that you need to feel these negative thoughts because it's what you've been accustomed to. It's what you've been programmed to. Do you really think that a baby is going to go to adult food or is the baby going to go to baby food? The baby's going to go to the baby food because he only knows the baby food. He has no idea about the adult food that's the delicious steak or it's a delicious meal or whatever it is, whatever comes to mind. The baby only knows what it knows. And just like you being a baby, <clears throat> sorry, just like the baby, you only know negativity. You only know what you're going to go towards. You only know the reactive side of things. You don't know the other side. We need to train our brain into understanding that there's another way out. There's another side of this, but it's how do we get to that other side? How can we train our brain to say, hey, you know what? Let's not be as reactive. Let's know that we don't need to feed off those negative thoughts. Let's know that there's something out there for us. And one second while I pause the video. Okay, well, how, Zach, do we become better? How do we not react so much? One thing, like I said, was not take things personal. You cannot be one person who takes things personal because when you take things personal, you feel like everybody's against you and the world's against you and that's not the case. Another thing is you need to chill out. And I know you're saying, okay, well, that's cool and all, but what do you mean? Understand that you cannot you cannot affect what's happening in your life. You need to understand that sometimes we as humans want to feel like we have the reins. We want to feel like we're in control. We want to feel like we're man, we're manning the reins in a sense, you know, we're, we're, we're the control operator. But sometimes you are not in control. And when you don't feel like you're in control, you feel out of touch. You feel like Nothing's going the way it should be. I don't know why all this stuff keeps happening to me, let alone you don't realize that you're not in control and something like this might have needed to happen to you. And when you realize that you're not in control anymore, but somebody who has a higher, greater power and somebody who wants you to succeed is in control, you realize that whatever happens to me happens. I don't need to take it as serious because I know something good's going to come from this. And that's one thing too, knowing that something good is going to come from this. You know, it doesn't matter what you're going through is coming if you can understand something good is coming from this situation i know it's hard to see in the in, in the frame of mind of someone who's not feeling the best you know i've been down and i've lost a lot of money in the stock market and i thought my life was over i'm not going to go into the complete figure of how much i lost but i thought my life was over because i had wrapped up into this idea that me was money I had money, I was money, I built my whole persona off of money. And after I had lost that certain amount of money, I was humbled. But little did I know that even though that happened to me and I could have reacted in a certain way, I had to understand that something good is coming. Something good is going to happen from this certain situation that's going to make me a better person. And it made me build my persona off of other things. It made me build my persona off of being a God-fearer and of someone who had a relationship with God and coming to all these certain values instead of basing my money or basing my values off of money. Right? Understanding that there is something good coming from this certain situation it means that you won't react, you won't get mad, you won't get angry. You know, you may have a little bit of spitefulness at the beginning because why would this happen to me? I get the same too. I'm one of those people that if something bad happens to me, like, shoot, man, something bad happened to me again. But then I realize, you know, this is good. It's good that something bad's happened to me. It's good that I'm having comebacks at work. It's good that I'm being checked in the market. It good, it's good that I'm being checked in real life and I'm being challenged and, and tested in ways that other people aren't getting. You know, life's unfair. It's going to test you in certain ways, but that's the a beauty of it. Life's unfair. So if you feel like bad things are happening to you, good. Let them happen to you. That's phenomenal. If you can change your mindset and think that bad things are happening to me, good things are coming, then how could you be reactive to the bad things? Because if we know bad things are coming to us and we don't know good things are coming after that, well, of course I'm going to be reactive to the bad things because I don't want bad things anymore. I'm tired of the bad things. I don't want to see the bad things. Screw you, world. Screw you, God. Pardon me. I don't like saying that, but you need to understand that saying those certain things and realizing that there's something good is coming after means that you won't be as reactive to the situation at hand. You won't feel like the world is against you. You won't feel like you're being scrutinized. You won't feel as bad and you won't feel the inclination to act on anger. 
and I'm sorry for my messy handwriting, I apologize, but you get what I'm saying. You won't feel inclined to react on that anger and you won't feel inclined to react on that resentment and that feeling of guilt and the feeling of why me, poor me, because you know something good is coming. You know you failed, but you get back up again. You know you failed, but something good is coming. You know you failed, but somebody else had to go through the same failure and look where they ended up and you're gonna end up in the same position. Oh, I'm talking to myself. It's phenomenal. Okay. All right. Just sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It ruined the whole thing. I'm kidding. That was rude. See, I could have reacted on that and said that, hmm, she just ruined the video, but... Maybe that was the, the, the thing that I needed in the video. Maybe that was the kind of, oh, I like this guy a bit more. I don't know what it's going to be for it, but I could have easily reacted on that. But see how I didn't? It is what it is. It's a funny thing to laugh at. And I don't need to react on anger because I easily could have said that. Hey, you're ruining the video or you're getting, <laughs> I can't believe that you're doing this. Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. React with emotional intelligence. Become emotionally intelligized, I guess is a good way of putting it. I don't really know what the correct word of saying is there. But understand that. Don't take things as serious. Understand good things are coming and be the bigger person. Don't yell. Don't react. Don't be silly. Be smart and realize that you're stronger than you actually are. Don't react on those emotions. Don't give in to the temptation. Overcome the devil and be strong with Jesus Christ. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Peace.